I just took my little doggy for a walk because it's gonna be really hot today. So I'm already like a little bit hot. I have a big ol' book haul to talk about today. This is a continuation of the book haul of my life. Which is where I am buying a bunch of books that I've read throughout basically my entire life up till now. I'm almost 30 and I never owned or I don't own currently and I want to. So today I think I have 16 books to go through and I'm going to do them by categories loosely. The first and largest category I have is middle grade or children's books. Let me take a sip of coffee and we can get into those. So the first book that we have for today is Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. This is a magical story about a land called Neverland that some children get taken to um, by a boy, Peter Pan, who doesn't want to grow up. And there are adventures with mermaids and pirates and fairies. I read this as a public domain book on my phone when I was in college, so it's nice to have a physical copy that I can return to and feel like I'm, you know, in that world in a more substantial way, I guess. I also got in the mail another Oz book. Um, this is the Emerald City of Oz, and in this, um, Dorothy, Auntie M, and what's her uncle's name? Um, Uncle Henry. They all get brought into the Land of Oz together, and they're, like, fighting off the Gnome King. The Gnome King is a recurring character, and he appears in some of these stories, and apparently he's in this one, unless... My plot summary has led me astray. Next, we have this really beautiful copy of The Wind in the Willows. I adore The Wind in the Willows. This is one of my favorite books. I, I loved the movie when I was a kid. There's a few versions of it, but we had one that I would watch over and over again. I adore these stories. Um, they're so rooted in nature. This follows the adventures of Mole, Rat, Badger, and Toad as they navigate the English countryside experiencing friendship, loyalty, and escapades. Yeah, Toad for sure is a, just a wild character and I think he's such a fun reflection of like what was going on at the time that this was written. And then we have something I read a little bit more recently and that is The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. It's an interesting idea, so let me get into the plot summary. A robot named Roz washes up onto an island and she learns to work with and adapt with the nature around her. She ends up forming relationships with the animals on the island and becomes like their protector. Then we're getting into something maybe a little bit a little bit more tending towards the YA side, and this is The Amber Spyglass, the final book of um, His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. So I love His Dark Materials series. Um, I have down here, I have The Golden Compass and The Subtle Knife, and this was the one that I was missing. The series is about, um, well, it's set in kind of like a magical fantasy world where people have these animal companions, but it is really quite a bit more complicated than that. And it explores a lot of topics, um, and at the root of that, there's a lot of discussion or exploration into organized religion. And in this last book, let me read the plot summary. Lyra and Will continue their journey across different worlds to discover the truth behind dust, and face the ultimate battle between good and evil. So it gets kind of dramatic in this one. I really liked this one. I have a book for Roald Dahl. This is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is such a weird, unsettling, and fun book, quite like the movies. 
It is about this poor kid named Charlie Bucket. He wins a ticket to tour this candy factory by the uh, infamous Willy Wonka. And so he's on a tour with these other children and it just goes off the rails. Then we have Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I love on this book, there's like these shadowy hands that only really appear when you like have a shift in light. It's a really cool effect. I read this, I think when I was in college. It is about this girl named Coraline and she discovers a secret door in her new house that leads to another world. It is like an alternate reality where there is the other mother, like her mother, but one that wants to keep her in that other world forever. Um, and so she has to escape that other reality. And then last for this batch of children's tending books, we have The Graveyard Book, also by Neil Gaiman. This is about a boy named Nobody who is raised by ghosts in a graveyard. If I recall correctly, in the in introduction of this book, Neil Gaiman talks about how it's kind of like the Jungle Book. That was kind of the inspiration where there's like these different stories and it's a little bit more complex. There are like these self-contained little stories but it all forms this whole world that this boy is growing up in. Um, and I think this has similar vibes. In this next batch of books, I have some something that I would consider science fiction. Um, and then at the very end, I have some books that don't really fit into a category of genre and are more um, general fiction. For the science fiction, I'm starting with The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. I love Ray Bradbury. I really, really appreciate him as an author. And The Martian Chronicles are a lovely collection of stories about living on Mars, string together to form a more cohesive story. I am just really happy to own this book now. Um, it is one of my favorites. Next we have Player Piano by Kurt Vonnegut. This is a story about a factory that has automation. There is this very stark divide. I think there's like a river or something and there's basically the people who own everything on one side and then like all of the displaced workers on the other side. And it's about how um, machines and automation have taken the jobs and livelihood away from these people. So this was a fun book for me to read as a, um, you know, manufacturing engineer who usually your job is to make things more efficient and more automated and therefore remove more workers from the system. <laughs> so, you know, it's fun to get yourself in check every once in a while. The next book I have is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut, and I just, I adore this story so much. I have this memory of reading this book out on the balcony of my Italian apartment um, and eating like little clementines and um, enjoying like a nice breeze and just wonderful weather. And you know, like there's the view of the Alps in the background, very idyllic, but this story is um, a very interesting story. Let me go into the plot summary. Cat's Cradle is a satirical novel that revolves around the protagonist, John, who becomes entangled in a bizarre series of events involving a fictional substance called Ice-9 that could potentially destroy all life on Earth. This book explores themes of science, religion, and the destructive power potential of human knowledge. If you ever listened to the Crystal Kingdom arc of um, the Adventure Zone <laughs> and you really liked that, you might really enjoy this as well. Just such a good book, <laughs> such an impactful book. This is a doomsday book by Connie Willis 
This is about um, a university researcher where they are historians and in this world historians can go back in time. That is a part of their research. They travel in time and they study the era that they are interested in. So our main character is interested in the medieval period and so she gets all readied up to go into the medieval times of uh, the town that they live in. Um, this is a, like a British novel and while she is back in time the university is experiencing not quite a pandemic but um, an outbreak of a disease then there's also the concern over the plague in the medieval period. So this book explores time travel and infectious disease. So I feel like after, you know, the pandemic that we've gone through, this might hit a little bit differently. And I really gotta peel these stickers off of the fronts of these books. Now we are out of our more science fiction category and we are into our general fiction category. So the book that I have now is John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men and it has been eons since, since I've read this. I know that a lot of students in the state of California have to read this as required reading. There's a lot of reading John Steinbeck just because he was like a California author and he writes about places in California. I think this is in Salinas or something like that. Um, but it's about these two farm laborers, I'm pretty sure, George and Lenny. It's set in like the depression era. They have these grand dreams of owning their own land and being able to do whatever they want, they want but they're kind of stuck in a more impoverished state. And this is a, a very sad book. <laughs> it's, it's not fun. It kind of is not that great to read as a kid, but um, I quite like John Steinbeck's writing and I thought I would like to read this again as an adult. Then we have The Man Who Was Thursday by G.K. Chesterton. I read this as a, a public domain book when I was in college and I absolutely adored it. I had no idea what this was about. Sometimes I would just like browse around for like public domain books and read like whatever I thought sounded kind of interesting and I was like, what is this? This sounds really cool. So let me read the plot summary because it has been quite a while since I read this. And as it seems to happen to me, if I really enjoy a book that's like not incredibly plot heavy, I seem to just forget every detail about it. The Man Who Was Thursday is a metaphysical thriller that follows Gabriel Syme, a poet and undercover detective who infiltrates a secret anarchist society in London. As the story unfolds, it delves into themes of deception, morality, and the nature of human identity. That sounds about right. <laughs> the next book I have is Life of Pi by Ian Martell. It made an impact on me when I read about that island. There's this mysterious floating island in this book and just something about that sticks with me more than anything else and there's so much in this book to stick with you. This is about a boy named Pi. He is telling the story of his life and then especially this circumstance where he finds himself trapped on like a lifeboat after a ship sinks and he is trapped on this boat with a tiger. It's about survival, it's about trying to make it through life. I just recently, like just this year, watched this movie because I had never watched it before and I thought it did a really good job of just portraying how it felt to read this book. And last we have Ishmael by Daniel Quinn. And this says an adventure of the mind and spirit and that's so true. So I guess it's explained as a novel. It's about a man having 
basically having conversations with this um, very sentient gorilla who can speak and um, have really insightful observations about humanity. I actually feel like this book and Sapiens have more in common than this book and another novel have in common. There's a lot of discussion about how humanity came to be where it's at. Through the dialogue of the man and the gorilla, the book explores humanity's relationship with the natural world, tackling issues of environmental sustainability, cultural myths, and the need for a shift in the human consciousness. And that is it! We went through all the books that I had for you today. I am going to do a specific book recommendation today because I feel like it. I want to do that, so I'm gonna do that. So this is a bit of a weird recommendation, but this is a book that reminds me of the color Ecru. For me, Ecru, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a color that evokes safari. <laughs> Safari, like natural, maybe like a little hot and dry. And the book I have for that is We Bought a Zoo. <laughs> so I had this on my bookshelf um, maybe like a month ago on my um, to read bookshelf, which is across the room. This is These are the books that I've read. I didn't think I was gonna like it. I thought it was gonna be a little hokey. Just be, I think it's just because the title is called We Bought a Zoo and it sounds really stupid. But this book is about a man who his family decides to try to purchase a zoo that is up for sale in, I guess, I think it's in Britain. And it's a, this is a very British book, which I didn't 100% expect, but um, there's a lot of hot British takes, which I guess is also a little bit on the Accru vibe, because <laughs> their food is so beige. It honestly made me want to visit a zoo. <laughs> there's some elements of this that I thought were just really, really, I never thought about. There's like some of the economic ideas around having a zoo. Like you want to have your flashy animals, you would trade like a less flashy animal for one that will like bring visitors in. Like zebras are highly desired just because they're um, striking visually and also um, like flamingos, people would want to have those. But then there are like those just kind of strange animals that are you're maybe trying to conserve and I, I really did appreciate the conservation discussion and aspect to this book. Yeah, so if you're looking for a book that will capture the essence of the color accru, I think this might do it for you. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this installment of the book haul of my life. Um, I feel like the book mail is starting to slow down, so I might want to do another batch of ordering because I'm not done ordering the books yet, um, and I have a small stack accumulating for the next installment. Um, so if you do want to see that, I would encourage you to subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon.